Today we are headed way, way out there, my friends, to the place where Texas comes down from the panhandle and then heads hard west toward El Paso. Famed musicians, barrel loads of Texas tea, and the biggest beach you ever saw, but without an ocean. So let's get on the road to Monahans! This episode was made for y'all with the help of our awesome partners. Check the caption for more info. Monahan sits a far piece away from any major Texas city, but it's less than an hour from Midland, Odessa, and even less from New Mexico. We'll get to town eventually, but our first stop is its biggest attraction, Monahan Sandhill State Park. While it's literally just off a crowded highway, a short drive through some deserted landscape, and you'll find a little known Texas style desert world. Okay, you guys get the gear ready. I'm just gonna go look around a little bit. Be right back. Where is he going? Uh, I don't know. What is he doing? The Monahan Sand Hills are unlike any other place in Texas. A barren world. Dunes as far as the eye can see, shifting with the winds. It's an untamed wilderness with almost no resources capable of sustaining life. Endless and confusing views at the top of every dune that in an instant can swallow you up and twist your mind until you have no idea where you are. Only the most adapted animals can survive in such conditions. Those that can live with little to no water. You know, I probably should have brought a compass. Where's the crew? Oh no, so hot, so sandy. Getting confused, I must survive on my own. Oh, this day trip isn't going so well. Now it's worse. I'm lost, I'm doomed, I'm... Maybe if I just had one more drop of water. I'm doomed, doomed to perish and join the desert. Ashes to ashes, sand to sand. That's impossible. Let's... Would you do your clothes? Oh, wow. Uh, do you guys have any water? Yeah. I told you this place was perilous. I just need a little water. And let's go back out. Only this time, I'm going to bring the crew. The Monahan Sandhills are actually part of a dune field that extends for some 200 miles, even crossing over into New Mexico. Most of them have plants growing on top, so they're stabilized, but out here, you get this amazing, barren, windswept landscape. Some of these dunes can actually get up to 70 feet high, including one that's appropriately named Mount Everest, about three dunes that away. Let's go see. Every day, this park changes as the dunes shift and shape with the wind. And while camping and hiking are both popular activities here at the park, by far the most popular thing to do is grab a sled and hopefully grab some speed. So up at the front desk, I'll actually check you out these sledding discs, little toboggans for flying down on these dunes. Polish it up real nice. Let's give this a shot. It's not like snow sledding the Rockies, but it is still really fun. Of course, the crew had to try it out. They didn't come out here just to watch me have fun. Round number two, we're gonna try a little bit of a different approach. The front desk also had boards that are specifically made for riding on sand dunes. Wee wee! 
I think I just clocked half a mile an hour. They say it's best to board after a good rain so the sand is more packed, but without a cloud in the sky, uh, we better stick with the discs. So with sand in every piece of clothing, it's time to slide off of these dunes and into town. A town that was built upon this sandy soil of West Texas. As the county seat of Ward County, Monahans has about 7,000 people, all living in the modern times, but surrounded on every side by relics of the past. From the vintage storefronts of Main Street to the abandoned roadside motels of yesteryear, Monahans has a gritty spirit weathered by the West Texas sun and shot full of character by the West Texas gun. And if you're looking for seasoned character in edible form, look no further than Pappy's. It's West Texas barbecue at its finest that's even made its way to the Texas Monthly Top 50 list. So if you like smoked meat or the smoking guns of old western films, Pappy's is your place. So you in at Pappy's often? Yes, yeah. I come over here from Midland just to eat at Pappy's. They've got the finest brisket that I've found anywhere in West Texas, and that says a lot. Brisket should be tender, but it should have a bit of a snap whenever you take that bite, and it does. It's great barbecue. Tender, juicy, love the sauce. Just a great atmosphere and a good place to come grab a bite to eat. Sure, now you always go with the chopped beef? I do. And yeah. the pepper. Everyone's got a jalapeno on their plate. It's about West Texas, man. They can take the heat out here. So what brings you into Pappy's today? Chicken and barbecue, man. Yeah. Delicious for lunchtime. Really? Yeah. And chicken? Chicken. You gotta, have, you gotta have the chicken, man. Whether it's chicken, brisket, or anything else coming off the pits, it's owner Ivan who keeps this place smoking. Everything's smoked. It's okay. gotta be smoked. It's mesquite, you know, West Texas barbecue. It just gives it so much flavor. It adds a lot to the meat. Now, do you go with the low and slow method, or you like to Definitely, no, definitely low and slow. You gotta make it with a lot of love. With a lot of love, there we are, there we are. What sort of folks do you have come in here? Um, we get all kinds of folks, uh, people off the interstate, oil field workers. Sure. And of course the locals. I mean, we've got a map up of like people that visit us from all over, not even just the nation, but all over the world. Well, I better add my own name to that ever-expanding map and get to eat. I was back there at the uh, cutting block and I just went ahead with the plate he recommended. Chicken, brisket, ribs. Jalapeno beans for sure. Look at how many jalapenos are in there. Y'all should call them jalapenos with beans. <laughs> yeah, cornbread for sure. And of course, a jalapeno on the top. And here we go, the barbecue that many proclaim to be the best in West Texas. I got a three meat plate so I can sample a lot of it. Down here, we got some of their chicken, and some ribs, and then somewhere underneath here, brisket. Look at it, got a nice uh, smoke ring around it. Seems pretty tender. So it's unusual for so many people at a you know Texas barbecue joint to rave about the chicken. So I had to get it rubbed with some kind of seasoning. Mm. Those are my favorite kind of ribs right there. Awesome, solid, smoky flavor. It is just pulling straight away from the bone. Oh, good. Look, a little at table entertainment. Where is the world's oldest golf course? I'm going St. Andrews in Scotland. Okay. St. Andrews in Scotland. Bam! Probably the only question in this box I can actually answer, so I think I'm gonna put it back in there. Back to the barbecue. Uh, more than just testing our useless knowledge, let's learn something substantial about Monahans and how this little town popped up in the wild west of Texas. To do that, we're headed to the Million Barrel Museum, collecting artifacts from all over Ward County, some of which are so big they would never fit in any museum, which is why they had to build the museum around it. Here's County Auditor Ellen Fryer for a tour. So this is massive to say the least. Tell me a little bit about what we're looking at. This is the Million Barrel, and it was built by Shell Oil in 1928. Uh, it held a little over a million barrels of oil. They did store it here for about a year. Unfortunately, uh, the barrel leaked. Uh, I think the, the weight of the oil was more than they anticipated when they built it. So they eventually drained the tank and they just didn't refill it and um, abandoned the tank. Oh no, a lot of work went to waste. I mean, this doesn't look like it was easy to build. No, and actually it wasn't. Um, they used a horse and mule. The man hour and the time that went into this is just amazing. 
At one point in the 1950s, a visionary tried to turn this into a water ski park, but since it didn't hold oil, you can probably guess it didn't hold water. But since the county took over, the Million Barrel has become a community meeting place for plays, fireworks, and history lessons. The site also holds the incredibly restored Holman House, one of the first boarding houses in Monahans, and the town's first jail. I think I'd rather stay in the house, just personally speaking. And then there's the Museum for the Rattlesnake Bomber Base, dedicated to the military history of nearby Pyote, Texas, which in the 1940s was home to the largest bomber training facility in the U.S. They trained B-17 pilots until the summer of 44, at which time they switched to B-29. The B-17 crews generally went over to Europe, and the B-29 crews generally went over to the Pacific. And two unique things is the Enola Gay and the Sluice, um, two famous planes, were never stationed here, but they were actually stored out at Pyot um, when the planes were stored out there before they went on to their museums. They came to Pyot to prepare to face enemy fire overseas, but they had to always be leery of the enemy that was right at their feet. As the base was built on top of dozens of rattlesnake dens, earning it its snaky nickname. Still rattlesnakes, there's rattlesnakes on property here. <laughs> yeah. This is just a really cool museum, with one really cool hole, but lots of really cool stories. You know, there's just something always crazy about the stories of West Texas. And as it turns out, there are some other interesting holes in these parts, just up the road in Wink, a town so small that as they say, if you wink, you'll miss it. So in the 1980s, a farmer here in Wink, Texas heard some splashing on his property. He went to investigate what it was, and he found this right behind me. It's a natural sinkhole that today is some 350 feet wide. A couple decades later, another one showed up that's three times this big, just a little south of here. And today they're known as the Wink Sinks. Sort of creepy that this thing would just basically show up overnight. And no one knows what's causing them. Some people blame it on all the oil exploration in the area. Other people think that it has something to do with the natural caverns here because Carlsbad's not too far away. But uh, I have my own uh, opinion on it. Aliens, just makes sense. We now interrupt this programming to remind you to like and subscribe. Now back to the road. Hey, Roswell, New Mexico is not too far from here either. But the only thing I'm going to investigate here in this small town is its best museum, dedicated to its best homegrown musician, Roy Orbison. And while this museum may be small, make no mistake about it, you can find big things in small places, just like big stars can come from small towns. So Roy Orbison was actually born in Vernon, Texas, which is around Wichita Falls. But from the time he was about eight years old until he graduated high school in 1954, he lived here in Wink. And here is his Wink Wildcat Senior Yearbook. There's the man. By this point, Roy was already the front man of his band, the Wink Westerners. From Wink, Roy moved all over Texas, eventually finding his voice in Nashville, where he recorded some of rock and roll music's most iconic songs. Oh, pretty woman walking down the street, pretty, oh no, y'all don't want that one? How about, how about this one? Only the lonely bum 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 be do all. It's tough when you have to sing your own back up. Know the way I feel. Anyone? Anyone? Oh, tough crowd out there tonight. I mean, come on, who doesn't love those? Roy's hits span decades, touched millions. He was even inducted into the Rock and Roll Music Hall of Fame in 1987, but the very next year died of a heart attack too soon at the age of 52. The man behind the mysterious glasses left this earth, but left behind one amazing legacy. Okay, so these are Roy Orbison's very last pair of prescription sunglasses. So sort of the, the thing that was most iconic to his whole persona, those dark glasses that he would wear on stage. This is the last pair he ever owned and the ones he wore at his last concert. That's like Smithsonian level stuff right here. Wow. <laughs> they got this interesting purple tint. I feel like I'm seeing the world as Roy Orbison did. These should be in the Rock and Roll Music Hall of Fame and they're here in Wink. Whew, wow. Not much to say, is there? 
that's like trying on a trying on Lyles' jumpsuits. Yeah. I mean, you know, that's a... Uh... Wow. The chance to touch a piece of rock and roll history is reason enough to drive out to Wink. But more importantly, it's a chance to learn about the man who is much more than a myth and now a legend. So it's time for our third town of the day. It's just up the road, the heart of Winkler County, home of the Yellow Jackets, and goes by the name Kermit. Yes, as in the frog. Okay, so here we are in Kermit, Texas, and you know what I'm thinking. Where's Kermit the Frog? Did someone ask for Hermit the Frog? No, I said Kermit the Frog. Who are you? I just said I'm Hermit the Frog. Oh man, uh, where's Kermit? Is, uh, is he available? Kermit, ha! You ever heard of a thing called intellectual property? All you're gonna get is me. So come over here and get a picture with this. Nah, I think I'm okay. Really? Yeah, I'm all right. What about you, sweet cakes? Seriously? Whatever. You're sort of creeping out the crew here, okay? Um, can you do anything? Maybe sing Rainbow Connection, something like that? Sure, sure. I can sing a song for 20 bucks. Gosh, nah, never mind. I'm sorry I asked. I'll do it for 10. Nope, not gonna happen. Not even a duet? Pretty sure, yep. An audience is waiting. Come on. Whoa, look at the time, Hermit. That's, <laughs> you, it's flown by so fast. Well, hold on. I got one more good trick. Wanna watch me catch flies with my tongue? No, never, ever, ever. Uh, we're gonna keep moving. The You're great missing out. Seeing you. Yeah, pretty cool. We're good. Wait, wait. Come back here, TV guy. Ah, whatever. If you're looking for a glimpse of the lovable green guy, all you'll find these days are a couple faded murals. But we aren't here to connect with rainbows or eat frog legs. We're here for more sand, which is just outside of town at the dunes at Kermit. While some dunes are meant for serenity, these are meant for adrenaline. It's a family business for full family enjoyment. Old to young, uh, beginners to experts. Uh, they ride uh, all kinds of different vehicles. They ride motorcycles, four-wheelers, dune buggies, side-by-side, -side, UTVs, anything that they to make it in the sand, people usually bring and, and try to run through the sand. That's if it'll right. make it in the sand is the key They'll phrase try. there. <laughs> they come from all over, often for days at a time, because this is one of the few places in America to do this. You know, just the scenery and the area that we have to ride, it just, you, you can leave here and be gone for 30 minutes, 10 minutes, or two hours. And these guys have the toys to play for a long time. Now it is BYOB, that's bring your own buggy. But luckily, Steve here, one of the owners, has agreed to take the crew out on his personal little toy. A toy with a V8 engine and sand ready paddle tires. I've never done this before, so uh, this will be fun. <laughs> Let's see what this baby can do. That ain't gonna stay, brother. Oh yeah, he's definitely right. This thing is a beast. How are y'all doing? Zero to sixty and what? Fast. <laughs> Let's ride. These dunes are just one giant sandbox yearning to be played in. Oh, yeah. Too soft. See that right there, though? If you don't pay attention, man, we'll be stuck. Oh, no dive into that and you're done. Yeah, you just have to pay attention to what you're doing. We gotta find a good one to jump. Now we're talking. Uh. Oh, back that up. Slow mo, please. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Let's go run down the trails right quick, because there are some trail rides out here I want to show y'all. 
Dune buggies like this ain't cheap, but man, are they fun. And they're built for whatever the sand throws at you, because unlike dirt and rock trails, the wind changes these trails daily, giving every rider something new on every ride. I'm gonna need to change my pants. Can we go back? I'm not trying to scare you. <laughs> now, while it may seem like it, this is not just a redneck free for all. Steve and his brother have a number of no tolerance safety measures to keep these dudes safe, clean, and ride ready. All 1,300 acres of them. Look at your hair! <laughs> oh, Steve, man, that this is incredible. I've never done anything like this, dude. It's a blast. If you come out and try it, and and I hope you like it. If you do, just you're gonna enjoy it for a long, long Forever time. Forever and ever. Let's rip it back home. All, all right? right, guys. Thanks for coming out. So we've been out here rednecking it up in the dunes. Time to step back to Monahans and step it up in classiness. Trading the loud sounds of engines for the smooth sounds of jazz. This is the Jazz Cafe, bringing you all the great jazzy classics like burgers, pasta, and steak. In a jazzy little restaurant owned by jazzy owners, John and Kathy Fawcett. How'd you come up with this place? It, it's a genre that's so broad and so wonderful and so absent in this part of the world that we just needed something. Just like their food, in a virtual desert for culinary creativity, Jazz Cafe is an edible oasis. We figured whatever people were driving away from here to go eat, that's how we came up with our menu. We wanted to give them a little bit of everything. It was a big dream for sure, especially when you start with an abandoned theater. The Tower Theater closed in about the mid 50s and just an empty shell when we bought it. it. We worked on it eight years. Wow. You drive through the town and you drive through this part of West Texas, it's a very rugged sort of vibe. And then you step in here and it's like, you know, something that comes out of nowhere. As surprising as the jazzy style may be, the real music is coming from the kitchen. And the diner's ears and mouths are eating it up. We have watched this come about for many years now. <laughs> waited and waited and waited. <laughs> and they finally opened it. And I go, was it worth the wait? It was very much worth the wait. Awesome. Yes. So what do you think about this place? It's a great place. It's a neat place to come. It's uh, very different from everything else that we have. We've lived here all of our lives and never had any place this nice to come and eat. Wow. We come here all the time. This I've is... lived here 65 years, so it's a great place. So you're a Monahan's native? Yes, sir. And based upon the native's recommendation, I'm headed for some steak. Ho, 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 it is a meat kind of day. Barbecue for lunch, steak for dinner. 12 ounce ribeye, cut here in the back, grilled medium rare. All right, steak me. Woo! Warm pink center. From the first bite in, I know I'm gonna eat this entire steak because every little piece of meat and fat in this is cooked perfectly, so it all just kinda melts in your mouth. Buttery, cheesy, bacony. What more could you want from a baked potato? Mm. So you guys know at a restaurant this good, I'm gonna get dessert, especially when the special is an apple dumpling with cinnamon caramel drizzled all over it. It's mine. You can't have it, Richie. I'm sorry. Oh, there's like a whole apple in here. The only proper way to polish off an amazing day is with an amazing dessert. I think we nailed it here. What a day. Whether you're looking for Texas's biggest beach without an ocean, history that's thicker than the oil in the ground, or the sweet sound of music coming from the people and kitchens that call this place home, you'll find it all right here in West Texas. A place with more character than the desert has sand, and this place has a lot of both. Well, this day has just been one little surprise after another. That's why I love day tripping. So I'll see all y'all out on the road. Via con Dios, amigos. The Monaghan Sandhills are actually part of a dune field that extends for some 200 miles, even crossing over into New Mexico. Most of the dunes, as you see, have plants growing on top. The dune dude. The dune dude. The dune dudes. You know, in honesty, this doesn't need any sauce, but since Ivan makes his own, I think I'll take a little, take it for a little, let me try that all again, man. <laughs> you know, in all honesty, this doesn't need any sauce, but since Ivan, 
<laughs> I'm not thinking straight. All right. This lady is taking way too long. She is slowing the stalker. line down. I know. To stay close to Everywhere we go, trooper. you're there. Christmas, Easter, you're always there. It's creepy. I know. It's but like I, but I just love as if you like so you're much. my mom or something. <laughs> so weird. Weird. She's getting some barbecue from Pappy's Barbecue to bring home to Pappy. Pappy said he's not here. Yeah. Barbecue. That's right. Howdy, y'all. Follow along with my adventures at Chet Tripper on Instagram and at the Day Tripper TV on Facebook and YouTube. Or head to thedaytripper.com for travel guides, past episodes, and info on our mobile app and Team Day Tripper. This episode was made for y'all with the help of our awesome partners. Check the caption for more info. Howdy, y'all. Chet the Day Tripper here. Thanks so much for tripping with us. Uh, remember, while you're here, like this video, subscribe to our channel so that we can stay out there on the road and keep on tripping. Did we miss anything in this town? Leave us a comment, let us know. We love finding out about new stops with all of your tips. And if you love Epic Texas Day Trips, remember to check our channel. We got a lot of them on there. Also, don't forget, if you want some sweet Day Tripper merch or another cool Texas made product, Come see us in Georgetown at the Day Tripper World Headquarters. You can also shop online if you check the link down there in the caption. All right, y'all. Bye, con Dios, amigas.